Hi everyone. In this video, let us discuss Cetraline. Cetraline is one of the antidepressant which is classified as SSRI, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. We have so many types of drugs which are classified as SSRIs. Among this, Cetraline is one of the well-known drug which is acting as antidepressant. And within the name, we can identify the prefix ser which indicates this drug is acting on serotonin levels. So this drug inhibits the reuptake of serotonin which increase the serotonin levels within the synaptic cleft. And the suffix traline indicates this drug is having the structure tetraline. Tetraline is simply a tetrahydro derivative of naphthalene. So cetraline is a tetraline derivative acting by inhibition of serotonin reuptake. So this drug is indicated for the treatment of major depressive disorder which is associated with pessimism, lack of concentration, apathy, guiltiness. All these conditions can be controlled by cetraline as this drug acts as SSRI. Similarly, this drug can also be used for few of the anxiety disorders. It can be indicated for obsessive compulsive disorder where anxiety is generated because of any obsessions or compulsions. Again, in such conditions, cetraline can be used. And this drug is also indicated for treatment of social anxiety disorder. The anxiety generated due to social interaction. And post-traumatic stress disorder, where the recall of past stressful events can produce some anxiety. All these conditions can be controlled by cetraline. So this drug is indicated as antidepressant as well as it also used for treatment of anxiety disorders. So this drug is also indicated for generalized anxiety disorder which is not associated with any proper reason. Again in such conditions cetraline can be used. Now let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of cetraline. Here we can identify this tetraline ring which is nothing but tetrahydronaphthalene ring. To this naphthalene ring at the first position amine group is present so we can write the suffix as 1 2 3 4 tetrahydro naphthalene 1 amine and on the nitrogen methyl group is present so n methyl and at the fourth position it is having a phenyl ring which is attached with the two chlorine groups at third and fourth position so we can write this as 4 dash 3 4 dichlorophenyl that is the complete name of cetraline now let us see how this drug acts. Cetraline mainly acts by inhibition of 5-HT reuptake. So these are the presynaptic neurons storing serotonin and these are the postsynaptic neurons expressed with serotonin receptors such as 5-HT2. Now when action potential reaches to the presynaptic neurons, calcium can enter to produce exocytosis so that 5-HT can be released and it can act on postsynaptic receptors. This produces postsynaptic activation but the action of released 5-HT is controlled by reuptake transporter such as SERT, serotonin reuptake transporter. This transporter is having the two sites. This is the primary site and this is the allosteric site. Both of these sites are required for reuptake of 5-HT. Now 5-HT which is released by exocytosis can be taken into the nerve terminal through this SERT. Now cetraline is one of the drug which inhibits this reuptake. It can bind to both primary as well as secondary site so that it can inhibit the reuptake of 5-HT. In this way, 5-HT is not going into the nerve terminal which results in increased postsynaptic activation. So this drug increases the 5-HT levels within the synaptic cleft, thereby it increases the serotonergic transmission. This improves the symptoms in the depressive patients. Now what is the precautions of cetraline? One of the important precautions of this drug is that it can increase the risk of bleeding within the patients. So this drug can produce some vasodilatation as well as leakiness resulting in the increased risk of bleeding. This is more important when this drug is combined with other drugs such as NSAIDs. For instance, aspirin is one of the NSAIDs which acts as antiplatelet agent. So it can increase the risk of bleeding when it is combined with cetraline. Similarly, if you have the anticoagulant such as warfarin, all these drugs can increase the risk of bleeding produced by cetraline. For instance, it can result in the increased bleeding from the nasal blood vessels resulting in the epistaxis or clotting of blood resulting in the hematoma and some gastrointestinal bleeding can also be observed. So all these should be closely monitored when this drug is prescribed for 
very longer periods. Similarly, this drug can increase the angle closure glaucoma. So, the patients with any narrow angles, this drug may increase the intraocular pressure, which should be closely monitored. Similarly, this drug can spread the serotonin syndrome, just like the other SSRIs. This drug is going to increase the 5ST levels, which can produce serotonin syndrome, resulting in few of the symptoms such as anxiety, agitation, and it can stimulate the heart, resulting in tachycardia. And patients may feel few of the psychotic symptoms such as hallucinations, tremor, sweating. All these symptoms can be observed with serotonin syndrome. So, this drug should be carefully given along with other drugs which increase the 5ST levels. Similarly, this drug can increase the risk of suicidal initiation, particularly in the children with age 12 to 20 years. This risk is more pronounced. And this drug can also precipitate hyponatremia. This is because of inhibition of antidiuretic hormone action, resulting in the decreased sodium levels. The sodium levels may fall less than 110 millimoles per liter. So, this decreased sodium may result in headache, confusion and loss of memory. So, when our sodium levels are reduced less than 110 millimoles per liter, then this drug should be carefully used. Similarly, on sudden withdrawal, this drug can precipitate few of the symptoms such as anxiety, agitation, some dizziness, somnolence and hypomania. All these symptoms can be produced on sudden withdrawal. So, this drug should not be stopped suddenly. The dose should be slowly tapered in order to avoid withdrawal effects. And this drug can also increase the risk of seizures in the patients. So, already if patient is having any history of seizures, this drug should be carefully given. Now, let us see the side effects of sertraline. This drug mainly produces few other side effects such as somnolence, which produce some sleepiness in the patients, and agitation, confusion, headache, dizziness, fatigue, nausea. And it can produce either constipation or diarrhea. So, it can produce some GA disturbances, dry mouth, visual impairments and some palpitations can be observed. And in the males, it can produce some erectile dysfunction resulting in the failure of ejaculation. How it is given? This drug is available as tablet at different strengths such as 25 mg, 50 mg and 100 mg. The initial dose of the drug is started at low dose and it depends on the type of clinical indication. Since this drug is used as antidepressant as well as to treat the anxiety disorders, the starting dose may be variable from 25 to 50 mg and the dose can be increased such that the maximum dose is variable from 100 to 200 mg. So, that's about this drug Cetraline which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. This drug can be used for the treatment of major depressive disorder as well as for treatment of anxiety disorder such as Generalized anxiety disorder, post traumatic stress disorder, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder. In all these conditions, this drug can be used, but this drug can also precipitate serotonin syndrome. So, care should be taken. And when this drug is suddenly withdrawn, it can increase the anxiety as well as agitation within the patients. And this cetraline is a tetraline derivative acting on serotonin reuptake. So, that's about this drug, cetraline. That's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.